book to those of you who were here early. And she should be really, really intriguing for all of us. So let's give a round of applause for Miss Carla Boone. this African queen is. I mean, I told her, I was like, I don't even know what to ask for when I go to the store to copy and steal this. Like, I don't know what to ask for. Like, that's just beautiful. <laughs> Welcome, Cola. Now, you said you wanted to, you were going to tell us a little bit about yourself and then do a reading from your work? Um, I'm not going to read from your book. I'm going to talk about how hard it has been for me to make. Okay. And, um, but it's going to be very interesting whatever else you need to what I will do. Um, maybe I'll say a little bit of something. But first, I want to talk about, uh, you know, there was a poet named Muriel Bruchheiser. Um, and she once said, what would happen if women told the truth about their lives? In 2006, a white male journalist named Stephen Milner went on Pacifica Radio and said that he had been offered enormous amounts of money to make up stories and lies about me by Arab oil companies, um, you know, people who are not, don't like my politics. Give them a little bit of background about yourself. Yeah, about about my politics. A lot of people um, don't understand. I'm originally from Sudan, but I'm raised in the United States by black Americans. Marvin and Claudine Johnson adopted me when I was eight years old. I returned later in my life and became an actress and model and became, unfortunately, at one point, the mistress of Osama bin Laden. And for people who follow MSNBC and CNN, you saw that whole debacle um, when it came out. Uh, a lot of people tried to claim that I had, you know, tried to make money off of the story, but I was not the one who revealed it. The London Guardian newspaper, which anyone can check this, revealed it, and then the story broke, and so I had to go basically defend myself um, in the media. I consider myself a writer. I don't consider myself someone's mistress or all these other things that have made me kind of famous. I really am a serious uh, womanist author. That is how I see what I do. And um, I'm, I'm so thankful that so many people love what I do and respect me for what I do. But coming from my country, one of the most controversial things has been I don't support Palestine, I support Israel, because South Sudan, uh, you know, we're enslaved by the Arabs. So because so many of the American white media loves to, right now, they're fighting for Palestine, and I think that's a worthy cause. I'm not against fighting for Palestine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. What I'm saying is I can't support them because of you know, you have to be a person from Sudan to know about slavery and the think of people of Sudan. Um, my uncle was killed at Port Sudan by seven Palestinians, basically because he's a black man who was promoted to foreman. Um, the Arabs are allowed to bear weapons in my country, the blacks are not. There are so many things, so many reasons why we have differences of opinion. But, a lot of people don't understand things like that, so they try to discredit you. Whenever you're different from saying something that other people are not saying, um, whenever you don't follow the status quo, because I also fight colorism in my books, I'm a big advocate for dark-skinned black Americans loving and embracing their darkness and not reading themselves out. These are very controversial topics that make people uncomfortable all over the place. Um, I post in the way of, I'm, I'm from an allotic area, I'm an Oromo, so I am topless on the back of my early books that were reprinted in America, and that caused more